when AWS launched its first set of cloud services, they also planted the seeds for the DevOps revolution that would follow a few years down the line. Today, it's even difficult to imagine some of the most successful companies of the modern world to even exist without cloud computing being there really. And that's the reason why if you aspire to be a site reliability or a DevOps engineer, you should definitely know about cloud computing really, really well. And here are the nine reasons why you should bother about cloud. Let's get started with those. Number one, the utility computing model. If you want electricity for your home, you don't go and build the power transmission, power generation units, or none of that, those sorts, right? You just go and go to the utility company, get a line, start using it, and pay at the end of the month. That's exactly what you could do now with the utility computing model made ubiquitous with the cloud platforms. If you want compute, network, uh, managed services, databases, storage, you can all buy that from the cloud provider instead of building your own data centers and investing in that. And that's just amazing feature to have. Uh, we use as much of infrastructure that we own and pay at the end of the month to the cloud provider, just like the utility providers. Number two, with cloud, you get access to the global infrastructure. For example, uh, AWS Cloud, Amazon Web Services has presence in 18 regions, and these are all geographically separated, some of those being on completely different com uh, continents. So if you want to build your infrastructure and go global, you can do that within a few hours uh, once you start once you have created your cloud account and that's just amazing thing to have imagine doing that without cloud that would be very expensive it would be very time consuming and that's what global infrastructure that is built by the cloud provider gives you uh, the number three is scalable platform the platform itself that you host your infrastructure on is scalable if i want to let's say create thousand node cluster uh, to create some sort of scientific experiment, I never have to bother about oh, where the infrastructure comes from because the underlying infrastructure that cloud gives you is quite scalable and there is always excess capacity available. Um, they manage it really well and most of the time you would you want it and you would get it. So you have an access to this scalable platform or infrastructure platform itself. Number four is OPEX versus CAPEX. We're talking about capital expenses versus operational expenses rather. Now, that might sound like a management mumbo jumbo, but that is a very important concept to understand. Let's say you're a startup and you want to go live with your product. Now, would you much rather prefer uh, working on your application and just bother about your idea or you also want to, want to get into, oh, how do I get the infrastructure to host my, you know, uh, application that I'm building? Um, you know, and then you will have to go buy the capacity, build the infrastructure, get the networking. Uh, instead of getting into all of this, you can focus on what matters most. That is your application, your product, and let cloud provider take care of the rest of the infrastructure pieces there. And that's just amazing. And with that, you don't have to bother about the capital expenses. You just pay for whatever you're using as an operational expenses. That is also very, very cost um, tax efficient rather. So your finance team would definitely love the operational expenses model than the capital expenses. The next is the dynamic capacity provisioning and scalability. So you can actually scale your application infrastructure and you can build resilience around that. So you can design your infrastructure to be resilient, to be scalable, and you can do that dynamically with a data center environment that is very, very difficult to achieve. And that's another, you know, important, um, you know, uh, feature that you get from the cloud. You get the scalability, you also get the resilience and the fault tolerance. That is the next part, which is availability. Again, with cloud, with features such as auto scaling, um, your infrastructure is not only scalable, but is also it is high available. 
and uh, the some uh, cloud you know provider or the features that they provide you will keep on automating automatically monitoring for your you know availability of your instances or the servers and take some action when there is a need to launch new capacity or if there is a server down it will automatically launch it that's just fantastic feature to have um, you also get the scalability you can also design your infrastructure in multiple geographical locations for even more high availability so that even if you have one data center being down you still have your infrastructure available somewhere else so you can build it with cloud basically uh, next is business continuity again it's related to my previous topic so business continuity is about disaster recovery so let's say you have um, a natural disaster hit one of the data centers you can still avail any other data center from the 18 regions that let's say AWS has and host your infrastructure in two different geographical, completely separate geographical region. Let's say one in India, uh, Mumbai, and another one in South America, Sao Paulo. And, uh, you know, even if um, some one of that gets hit, you always, you know, there's very little chance that it, both of these regions would get affected. Now, so um, business continuity is also what you get um, with cloud. Next is managed services. And this is especially important if you are a smaller team managing a lot of infrastructure, a large scale infrastructure and so on. Um, and uh, using a managed service there helps you because you don't have to bother about setting up, configuring and uh, managing, automating and uh, so on, right? For example, uh, RDS database with AWS. So you just have to, you know, click few buttons, you get the database and that database is completely managed, including the backups, snapshots, uh, high availability, uh, scalability. So you can have multiple copies of the database, multiple replicas of the database, and you can dynamically scale those as well, right? And you don't have to bother about the patching, updating, troubleshooting, monitoring because all of that is taken care by the cloud platform for you so managed services are my favorite especially uh, consider those especially if you are going to manage a large-scale infrastructure um, and you're a small team the last part the ninth point is automation with cloud you get automation out of the box and that's amazing because then you can do anything and everything with a, with some code and that's where tools such as Terraform, specialized tools such as Terraform or generic tools such as um, Ansible or specific tools such as CloudFormation or Heat Templates can be very useful. Because with that, you can write everything as code, store it in the revision control system and you want to launch more uh, stacks like that, you can do that within minutes. If you want to migrate your infrastructure from one in uh, one data center to another, one cloud to another, all of that becomes easier when you start writing or defining infrastructure as a code and start automating it. And that's one of the primary topics of our course here as well, infrastructure as a code. So automation is important. Automation is extremely useful and automation can save a lot of time for you in a long run so that's an important aspect as well so those are the nine topics that i spoke about uh, are the reasons why you should bother about cloud and you should you know um you would find cloud useful as a site reliability or a devops engineer